it, it's unfortunate, but um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm pretty open to talking to people. I think you have been too, and I'm looking forward to teaming up on some uh, chat at some point. Yeah, the that's why is, I read that. Yeah, go ahead. The thing is, it's kind of disheartening when you're debating against someone who just assumes that they're right. Um, but here, what I've, makes you I've think? What makes? Wait, wait, wait a minute. What makes you? What makes you think that my declaration of my mental state is an assumption and not the product of God's sovereign revelation? One sec before you answer that, Maths. Um, I guess there's two of you guys in here. There's Darth and Sai, so maybe Maths should mm -hmm. have someone to join him. Uh, does someone? Does someone else want to join in and just make it a two v two? Uh, I, 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 I'm too high for a debate. <laughs> Oh, just and Abby. Well, well, you stated that I, that I'm assuming it. If your statement is correct, if it's true, well, isn't that, that what then it presupposing is? No, no. Well, a presuppo presupposing it means your you know your bottom basic or your your ultimate commitment. Now, in some instances, a presupposition may be without um, a justificatory path, but in the Christian worldview. Uh, that presupposition has a justificatory path. It is the revelatory acts of God. Now, when you stated that um, my position, or, or you know, someone like myself, like Sai, is just assuming it, we're, we're assuming it. If your statement is true, then it necessarily follows the falsity of the Christian God. Are you aware of that? Are you there? Is my mic working? It, it doesn't necessarily follow that the Christian God doesn't exist. Just just because you're assuming something, you can assume something, and that thing could be correct. No, I didn't. No, I no, I said if he's going to characterize my stipulation of the revelation of the Christian God as an assumption, right? That I I'm just assuming it. I have an, rather, I have a question. Rather, but it is an assumption, right? I mean, even even if you know something, if you do know it, you're also assuming it, right? Like. Well, you people, assume something people generally use, well, people generally use the word assumption um, in a situation like that, saying, you know, you, you believe it, but you, you really, it's not really knowledge. It doesn't have a justificatory path. So when you state that my stipulation of the revelation of the Christian God is an assumption, it, it, it's very strongly implicit that there's not a justificatory path. Now... If there's not a justificatory path, then it necessarily follows the falsity of the Christian God. Are you aware of that? I just got a quick question, if you don't mind me interjecting. And sorry, I'm not really... No, familiar. no, 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 not at all. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I'm not really familiar with this forum, so I don't really know who was speaking. But um, the person who had said that part of their objection to what we do is that we come into the argument assuming that we're correct. I'm just wondering, does that person come into the argument assuming that they're wrong? Um, no. Well, then what's the problem? Well, I also don't assume that I'm correct. <laughs> what is, that, you is, that, is that true? That yes. you don't assume you're correct? And do you assume that you don't assume? Oh, my God. I, I just, Darth, I, we're going to go down the I same thing. So guys. Be, I, I really can't be bothered with the mind. Well, well, well. You just let Sai and Darth talk. Simply. We're simply critiquing, you know, what you're saying. So when you declare that my stipulation of the revelation of the Christian God, that God has communicated with man, he's condescended, he's revealed himself ultimately through Jesus Christ, and I stipulate that, and you say that's an assumption, the implicit idea there is that it doesn't have a justificatory path. And if there's not a justificatory path, then it necessarily follows the falsity of the Christian God. So my question to you is, do you have a defeater for the Christian God? Because if you don't, then you can't make that assertion. Because then that assertion won't necessarily be true. So do you have a defeater for the Christian God? No, so you don't. So therefore, your statement is just simply a wild guess. I just think it's very odd that, you know, even if it were the case that we were coming in with an assumption, you know, which I'm not even conceding, but but just stating that his objection is that we come in with the assumption that we're correct, 
and to think that he does not come in with the assumption that he's correct, it's just bizarre. To, so to start off a conversation like that, I think is disingenuous from the very beginning. Darth, you still have me muted. Okay, so um, since there's no there's no um, hard atheists in here, are there any atheists who no. lack belief in God? Anyone? I do, but you're not talking to me. You're right. I'm not talking hey, to you. Darth. I gave you an opportunity to conduct yourself like a big boy, and you decided not to. I did. Your just threshold's pretty low. You're turned down, Trip. What the hell? Okay, so no one, no one wants the cop to having a lack of belief, and I'll just simply say, for those oh, of you who do, oh, I do. lack belief, I, okay, okay um, for those of you who... There's one, uh, Darth, there is one guy talking up, Trip. I don't know. I guess you have him turned down. I'm not sure how <laughs> strong a dislike you've got going for him, but he apparently... Wants to oh, well, I'll unmute him, but if I muted him, it means he was previously being a troll, but I'll give he him a second He was not trolling. Chance. He okay, absolutely so what did you say, Trip? So I don't want to necessarily engage with this again. I just had a question about the Bogosian DSM thing. Uh, I'm, I tried to look it up, but I can't seem to find anything super credible. I, I mean, my the quotation that I gave? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to see. That's, 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 in the back, that's, that's in the back of the book, in the appendix. Oh, is it? I think I... He, 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 has a, he has a list of things that he wants to achieve, um, and one of them is to, de excuse me, is to have all people who believe in God to be designated in psychiatry as mental, mentally ill, and he wants to use the mental health industry and the government's involvement in mental illness to uh, depict and classify uh, religious people, people who believe in God, and especially Christians, as mentally ill, and he wants to use the government to financially cripple religious organizations. That's why I said he's a foaming at the mouth uh, yeah. atheist. Oh yeah, he's like hook, line, and sinker with like the whole scientism thing. But like, right. he's, kind of, he's kind of a cook. But but yeah, I talk in, with in them. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it's in it's in the it's in the appendix. Now I talk okay. with some street epistemologists who were. You know, basically, they're following his model. And then when I asked them about it, they were deer in the headlights. They had they had no idea that their mentor, the man who they're following, uh, has su such radical ideas of going after people and using the government. Very cool. And uh, uh, never mind. I was going to ask why you muted me before, but you said you don't seem to remember. So. Yeah, I, I talk with so many people, and people are disruptive and trolling. You know, maybe you know, maybe there was noise coming through your microphone. So uh, we're good. I, I, we're good, I we're good now. Good faith, but... All right, we're good now. Uh -huh. So my, my my problem as as a Christian is that um, people who say they have a lack of belief because God is not rationally justified is they're violating their own principle, even when they say that. Because in order to reason that, there has to be some ultimate ground of being. There has to be some impersonal absolute, um, which replaces God as the personal absolute. So if one can reason that they're justified in having a lack of belief in God, because there's insufficient you know, justification or evidence, then what is the ultimacy of reality that provides them with the capacity to reason? And what's the rational justification for that? Otherwise, their claim to have lack of of, of belief is just gibberish. It will violate its own principle. And in my debate with Destiny, he said he could rationally justify um, his impersonal ultimacy. And then it turns out he couldn't. He tried to appeal to sense perception, which I explained to him was begging the question. Then he flipped and said, oh, he justifies it by appeals to non-justified axioms. So this is the incoherence of, of atheism, especially when they, they try to, you know, water down atheism and say it's it's a lack of belief. So, Darth, you say that your your presuppositions are have a justificatory path? Is that, I think how you said it? Is that yes. Yeah. What, what does it mean to have your presuppositions justified? Does it, wouldn't that then mean that they're no longer presuppositions? Not necessarily. It just means that there are our most bottom basic mental states or ultimate commitment. So if they're the most so in, in the, in, yeah, if my ultimate commitment is to the revelation of the Christian God in the 66 books of the Bible, that's my ultimate commitment, that the Bible is the ultimate authority. And I have that as my presupposition. 
Okay. So, uh, but- I, I don't. I don't mean that that's without justification. There is justification. It's called the revelatory acts of God, the way He constructed the world, the way He sovereignly and providentially um, direct is directing human human history, and giving but- His also His special revelation. If your presuppositions are built upon these these other things, um, are, then I'm not seeing how they're, they're considered presuppositions. Aren't they just don't they just follow from your more basic beliefs of these acts of revelation? Well, your presupposition could be considered what your fundamental starting point is, your or your ultimate commitment. Right, but your and starting in my point case, it's not yeah. it's not these pre. What you're saying these they're your presuppositions and that they're your starting point, but yet you're you're trying to you're justifying them with something prior to them. It, how how can they be your starting point if you're not starting there? Just uh, let me inter- no, interject I, for a second. I think you're confusing presuppositions with axioms. Presuppositions are provable, whereas axioms are not. And the way that a presuppositionalist proves them is by the impossibility of the contrary, as revealed by God in Scripture. Yeah, presupposition okay. need not be uh, justification less. The, the presupposition that we hold that the Christian God exists and he has revealed himself sovereignly in natural and special revelation has a justificatory path in human history. Now, if, you go, if, you, if you're not a Christian, then you're going to reject that, that stipulation of a justificatory path. Yeah, so, uh, so, okay, so, the, so you're distinguishing between a presupposition and an axiom. Is, is that correct, Sai? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are there's a branch of uh, presuppositionalism called Clarkianism, and they would say that God is an axiom, whereas I would not say that God is an axiom. I'm a Vantillian presuppositionalist, and we say that God is a necessary presupposition, which is provable provable by the impossibility of the contrary. So you, so you don't have any axioms, then? You, is that what you're saying? No, I wouldn't say that. I would call them presuppositions, but like I say, I don't. I, I don't really, I'm not really interested in uh, debating things beyond the existence of God. So do I have certain axioms? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I've never even investigated that. I call my beliefs based, I call them presuppositions. And I would say that they're all grounded in God. Okay. And, you, and the way that you're using those words to define, you're saying that an axiom uh, would not have a justification um, and you're saying, but you're saying that these presuppositions are justified, and that's it's a kind of distinction between the words. So does that mean that your your belief in God is your is your axiom that supports those pre- presuppositions? No, my belief in God is a presupposition which is justified by His revelation. So how do you how do you justify um, your experience the experience of his revelation? Well, I don't need to justify that. I mean, are you basically asking how do I know it's true? You know, I get this question quite often about how do I know things about God being true? And if I could justify those things outside of God, then my belief would be false. Because if God is a necessary precondition for truth and for rationality, then I cannot go outside of that to prove my justification. I'm saying that the denial of that, reduces one to absurdity, and it doesn't even allow the person to uh, formulate the question or to make his question intelligible. Uh, can I make a distinction? Go nuts. <laughs> all, um, all axioms are presuppositions, but not all uh, presuppositions are axiomatic. I'm a theist, by the way. Yeah, well... I- my understanding of the definition of an axiom is that they're not justifiable; they're not provable. And I would say that I would yeah. say that the presupposition is. So, yeah, um, that sounds reasonable. What you just said. WM, say there. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can Cy and Darth hear you? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, what's up? I have a question. I don't know if maybe you already talked about this, but I was wondering, what is really the difference between this presupposition thing and, say, just assuming something based on nothing? I don't. I really don't. I don't know the difference. You want to take that side? No, that's fine. Um, I mean, it's a very exp- uh, simple explanation because we don't assume things based on nothing, that our starting point is God and his revelation. We have a revelational epistemology. which means that everything we, kn- we know is either 
by or via the revelation of God. And I'm saying that that's not only the case for Christians, but that's the case for non-Christians as well. And when you make knowledge claims, we don't say that you really can't know anything, but you can't justify any knowledge claim outside of God. So when you make a knowledge claim, according to Scripture, you're suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. And like I say um, quite often is people do not go from unbelief to belief when they become Christians. They go from suppressing the truth to professing the truth. So Does your argument... <laughs> Sorry, what? Go for it. Uh, so to me, it sounded like short answer was God. You believe in God because God. So how no, is that not a circle? Not, no, no, we're not saying God, therefore God. What we're saying, God exists in virtue of the fact that God has given revelatory acts, including natural and special revelation. Otherwise, we would we could not and would not know. And in fact, I couldn't even know there's a quarter in my pocket were it not for the revelatory acts of God, meaning how he constructed this world, chemistry, physics, uh, sense perception, neurology, my, co my cognition. So what we're saying is there's a justificatory path. Now, you may, you, may, you may reject that, that there's not a justificatory path. But we're, we're not just saying God, therefore God. We're saying God has revealed himself. God has condescended and communicated to man. So the, <laughs> have you explained why or how God uh, revealed himself, like you say? Yeah, God's revealed himself in everything that exists. Everything that exists is evidence overwhelmingly for the existence of God. In, in, other, in other words, there's not any one thing that you can point to that does not have its causal origin in God. And God has constructed the human mind in such a way that it's simply overwhelming. If you read Romans 1, it says they are without excuse from ever since the beginning of the creation of God. His eternal power have been clearly seen through what has what has been made. Now that's God's natural revelation. He's also made you to innately know that. But for some people, they suppress the truth and unrighteousness. As I said, they psychologically deceive themselves. And God has also given special revelation uh, to certain individuals throughout human history. And it has been recorded objectively and accurately and infallibly in the Bible, which is what we refer to as special revelation. That will either be reject, accepted or rejected. Um, and, and, and the Bible is self-verifying. It's self-attesting. It requires no other independent source because no other independent source could verify the revelation of God. But the consequences of rejecting that self-attesting revelation is, as Sai said, you will be plunged into absurdity. You will not be able to make sense of anything in spite of the fact that you think you can right because if you're going to make sense of anything it's going to require context and if you give me context i'll say good is that the ultimacy of reality and uh, if if it is i'll say good tell me how you know it's the ultimacy of reality if it's not i'll say good then what's the ultimacy of reality that provides for that at the end of the day you're not going to be able to tell me what the ultimacy of reality is apart from the revelation of the living and true god therefore your as i said your worldview when you reject christianity will be reduced to absurdity. And as uh, as Sai said again, uh, the, the, the Bible is proved, his revelation is proved due to the impossibility of the contrary. Uh, so I think it's important to say that um, the argument is never, because you said God, therefore God. And I think it's important to say that the... the I didn't say that. Well, no, not you. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the atheist. I wish I knew his name. Um, That's me, WM. This, okay, so WM, uh, we wouldn't say God, therefore God. God's never the conclusion of the argument. We would say, therefore, like God, therefore knowledge. God, therefore we know things. So uh, because there's no premise, that uh, no other premise that would work for therefore we know. You can never say X, therefore we know, other than God for X. So my thought is you're saying something like God, therefore knowledge, but you're starting with God, aren't you? And, and so well, I'm asked well, why. That's are you... fine. God's not the conclusion. Is, do you have another premise that works? Well, here's the thing. I mean, I, I will remove the mystery for you and for a lot of people that are listening. God reveals himself to me and to Darth and to Jeff the same way he reveals himself to you. And as we talk here, we will all be making knowledge claims, but the difference is we'll be able to justify them. And if you ever were to go to your own justification rather than stipulate 
you know, um, the atheist mantra for what you believe. But if you actually were to go and try to justify the claims that you're making, then you would see how God reveals himself to you. But like I say, the difference is that we profess that revelation and you suppress it. I definitely don't see how God reveals himself to me. I've never seen him or anything like that. Uh, have right, you? But, well, that's what we do in these conversations, because you will deny that revelation from God. And we'll say, okay, since you deny that, we'll answer a fool according to his folly, lest to be wise in his own eyes. You want to deny that revelation. We say, fine, how do you justify logic? How do you justify truth? How do you justify morality without God? And you see it just usually turns into a, a dog's breakfast. <laughs> I need to get a notepad so I can write down these things. <laughs> well, the, the, the point is you're going to be starting in the conversation from an ultimate commitment. And somebody like Sai and myself, we're starting from an ultimate commitment. And that is the revelatory acts of God, the Bible, Strong. as the ultimate authority. And you ask, well, how do you justify that? Well, we justify that by God's revelation. Now, your response is, oh, well, that's going to be circular. Well, how else would you justify the ultimate authority? To appeal to an independent source or a third party would be a logical contradiction because then that would be the ultimate authority. So from a purely logical standpoint, only the ultimate authority can verify and demonstrate that it is the ultimate authority. Now, the question is, you're operating, you know, every time you get up in the morning, you, you're operating from an ultimate commitment yourself. So if you're asking, how do you, how do you justify, how do we justify our ultimate authority? And then when we tell you through God's revelation, and you say, no, 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 that's circular. Well, then your ultimate authority, how do you justify that? The answer is you don't. So you have this phony standard for God and his, and his revelation that you don't apply to your own worldview. This is why I ask atheists all the time. When you have lack of belief in God because God's not rationally justified, then what's the ultimacy of reality that provides the, the atheist with the capacity to reason? What's the justification for that? And the answer is they have none. Okay, um, I, it seems no one's eager to jump in, so uh, if I can jump in. Um, you know, there was life on Earth prior to this revelation you guys are talking about. There was life in ancient Greece, in ancient Athens. There was life in ancient India. There was life in places like Japan and Thailand prior to contact with Christian missionaries. You guys use the word justify and justification a lot. If nobody encountered any difficulty in their lives in the development of massive civilizations, moral systems, legal systems, living good lives, and writing philosophy that is, objectively speaking, more sophisticated than what can be found in the Old or New Testament, then um, isn't this justification, this whole question of justification you're raising, isn't it something that's really kind of a footnote to a footnote to the history of civilization and not a problem that's inexorably going to come up in anybody's life? Well, Jeff here's, the, here's the problem. Well, I'll, go ahead, Jeffrey. <clears throat> General revelation uh, is sufficient for our uh, culpability. And uh, that's general revelation is like the creative uh, acts of God. And you are God's creation. We are God's creation. And so the knowledge of God, is, it's, it's innate in us. Can I ask a question about that? Go. How do you know that you're not being deceived? Yeah, was that the same way you do. I, I just want to ad address that what was said earlier about. Um, um, wait, sorry, wait, I'm, I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to cut in for one second. Uh, Darth Destiny is talking right now to Sai, so if you want to be able to hear, you may want to unmute him. Just for the record. Okay. Yeah, I just I just want to say to the person who was speaking earlier about. Um, these pr prior uh, existing civilizations to scripture or whatever the person was saying. You see, uh, Darth and I, we're not evidentialists. And knowledge oh. of past civilizations, then you're going to be assuming a lot of things that, that we say that you can't justify without God. And the analogy that I use is like two countries that are going about to have a war. And according to our worldview, um, we have all of the weapons. Um, the Bible says, from him, through him, and to him are all things. Now, you want to come into a forum like this, and you say, well, I want to have a war with you. And we're going to say, well, we're not going to give you those weapons in order to have that war. So I won't even 
often get into the dis discussion about historical events because I would be conceding the fact that you could have knowledge, you could have truth, you could have all these things without God. So when I engage in a discussion this form, I'll say, look, I will talk with you about anything, but first I want you to justify your position without God. Yes, but the point is the entire history of India, Japan, huge parts of the world, millions of people living in cities, history of Cambodia, these things managed to unfold on a massive scale, including sophisticated epistemology and metaphysics, more sophisticated than anything in the Bible. And nobody had a crippling realization that they couldn't justify their views without appealing to belief in a God who was nailed to a piece of wood in Israel. Just, it was never a problem. So if I say to you, it's impossible for you to see the world clearly without this pair of glasses. I think that's quite a fair analogy to what you're saying about faith and Christianity. Say, so, hey, I have a pair of glasses, and these people around me, they think they can see clearly, but they can't because they haven't tried these glasses out of my pocket that will correct their vision. You might say back, well, you know, right now millions of people are living just fine without these glasses. You know, they're developing science and, you know, civilization and living wonderful lives. So what is, the, there's a burden of proof on you. That these right. glasses you're selling really are a miracle cure. But here, here's and there's a burden proven you 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 don't want to face. Well, uh, let's get right back to your initial claim about these prior civilizations. And my question, I know people don't like when I do this, but when you made these claims about these prior civilizations, I would quite simply ask you, is that true? And if you say, yes, it's true, I'll say, well, define truth according to your worldview and tell me how you can know anything to be true. Because I would say that when you make claims about prior civilizations that could reason, that could have all these things without God, you are making a truth claim. And I'm saying that you have no basis for making a truth claim. And if, if I were to talk with a Christian about prior civilizations, how they could know things, then I'd be happy to have that discussion. But with somebody who cannot justify the very claim they're making about prior civilizations, I won't even go there. Okay, so you, would you would you on your part claim that you're not making a true claim about prior civilizations? Because you're making the claim that cognition in itself is impossible without faith in the Christian God. That's that's a claim that can be falsified. Right? We're also saying that you, that everyone does have a kind of faith. I, I understand, God. I understand, but, but that's no. that's falsifiable, right? Well, so if I'm, I can show you, there's a magical country called Japan. It's real exotic and real far away or any of these examples, that already falsifies your claim. Because you're claiming basic cognition, or at least advanced cognition of things like metaphysics and epistemology, that requires the pair of glasses you've got in your pocket. It requires this optic, this way of thinking, this way of believing. But and we have, that's that falsifiable. That can be tested. Try not to interrupt him. No, sir, that was in my sense, but thank you. Thank you. The problem is you are 10 steps ahead of where I want to go. You make a, a truth claim about prior civilizations, and my question to you is what is truth? Yes, I understand that your position is you don't want to acknowledge that anyone else can make any claim unless they first accept your propositions. No, However, that's, that's, that's a. Sorry, well, I'm not that, that is, I, mean, I think. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> that's what saying, you've said pretty no, regularly. No, no. I'm just saying if you wish to make a truth claim, that's fine. Justify it. Okay. So I'm I'm not actually making a truth claim. I'm actually simply paraphrasing your truth claim and presenting it back to you, and it's revealed as absurd. Your claim is that basic acts of cognition are impossible without Christian faith or Christian style faith. I, I guess you just you also accept certain forms of Judaism as being close enough or what have you. I don't know exactly how narrowly you, you draw the lines here. And in fact, that's that's a falsifiable claim. And then when you're presented with that, like, well, we do have examples of millions of people falsifying this claim, your response is to say, no, you're not willing to accept or consider any counter arguments or examples from people who don't already accept your axioms, your asserted suppositions. So only people who agree with you can disagree with you. That is, again, when, when a very obviously people, logically flawed and, and absurd claim. So yeah, like good luck with that, guys. Those people uh, do say things, like when they make claims or they, you know, basic, they, when anyone exhibits basic cognition, they are accepting uh, our, um, our uh, what's the word I'm looking for, propositions. Right. So that's, that's what you're here to demonstrate. But that's not a, some kind of foregone conclusion. Oh, this is petitio principia. How, how, this is the begging of the question. Yeah, is my microphone working? 
Yeah, it's very low, Darth. It's something wrong. Yeah, like, is this um, is this the fellow who's speaking now who uh, Darth uh, muted before? I don't even know how you do that and something like no. that. No. I can, oh, okay. I'm a new person. I wasn't muted before. Oh, okay. But the, the thing is, like I say, it just, and it happened on, I was on the on the um, non-secular show last night. Same thing. All I was asking for is a, a definition of truth according to the person's worldview. And they just go out and they spew out many more truth claims. And I'm not saying you have to assume mine. Of course, I would say that, that according to my worldview, I have the only um, definition and the only support of truth that is possible. But if somebody wants to come in and say, no, 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 God is not necessary, I say, well, fill your boots. Tell me what truth is and how you can know anything to be true without God before we start getting into truth claims. Um, okay. Woody, you stated that um, the proposition that the God of the Bible is the necessary precondition of all knowledge. You said that that's falsifiable. How, do you, how would you falsify that? Right. Well, I, I think it's obvious even from the terms you're using, because you're using transparent terms. If I said to you that, um, for example, knowledge of how large a piece of cloth is, is impossible without using a measuring tape or a ruler, we can test that. We can say, okay, look at all these people trying to cut cloth, and they don't have the tools necessary, so they can't really cut you're, a square you're, piece you're of not, cloth. You're not addressing I, I, my please, question. Don't please let me finish. I'm, I'm addressing your question much more directly than Jesus Christ ever addressed questions put to him in the no, you're not. You're Is not this? addressing it. Red call popper? Do you know what falsifiability means? So it's a falsifiable claim that knowledge of this kind relies on a precondition. So we can't wow. know how big a piece of cloth is. So in the same way, you're making the claim that basic forms of cognition require some tool, and the tool in your case is belief in a Christian God. That's your name. No, so therefore, no, no, that's false. No, I'll, I'll finish then. That's that falsifiable would you, would you precisely the same that. way. Don't interrupt him, Darth. Okay. Yeah. Therefore, in the absence of that tool, in the absence of that precondition, it should be impossible or, or very clumsy for people to attempt to to do those things, yes. Okay. So you, it's you, 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 Yeah, you just misrepresented. You just misrepresented the um, the presuppositional position. I didn't say that belief in God is the necessary precondition for knowledge. I said the existence of God is the necessary precondition for all knowledge. Now, how is the stipulation the existence of God is the necessary precondition of all knowledge? How have you falsified that? Okay, so that was not the argument presented when I came in. I was very no, sir, explicitly so th This is God. a common mistake. This is a common mistake that people who listen to presuppositionalists like Sai and myself make, is they misconstrue when we state that the God of the Bible is the necessary precondition for everything, including knowledge and wisdom, that it is misconstrued, meaning, oh, you have to believe in God. So, for example, my... Um, uh, my doctor who, who examines my leg and he tells me that I have a broken leg. He can know that I have a broken leg when he's an atheist, even though he doesn't believe in God, but he knows it in virtue of the God of the Bible, who is the ultimacy of reality. So when we say that God is the necessary precondition, we're saying God is the ultimacy upon which all contingencies depend, including knowledge. So if we stipulate that the God of the Bible is the ultimacy of reality, upon which everything depends, okay? And I made myself very clear there. How do you falsify that statement? Okay, so I, I agree that's now not falsifiable, but you've also, you know, taken God as such an abstract concept that we can take the same statement and replace the word God with gravity, and it's neither more nor less true, right? Well, go nuts, okay. do it. Replace so, it with so, gravity so, and have so, your argument. So, no, yeah, so let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Since you want to raise the falsification criterion of Karl Karl Popper, um, how is falsification pro uh, possible in your worldview for anything? Doesn't falsification of anything require laws of logic and verification? Um, no. But anyway, you can continue. Falsify, I mean, you, you, can, you can falsify uh, something. You can falsify something without verifying its negation. Uh, I'll I'll go with yes on that. But um, the the point is, I know you feel proud that you've taken <laughs> this out of the realm of falsifiability. 
sure. Because no, sir, so you didn't understand what I just said. Why are you interrupting him? You just stepped into a dog pile. Okay. Now listen. No, you're derailing your own conversation. I'm 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 wanting to keep it on the topic. I'm not not derailing, and I'm specifically addressing your mistake here. Now, in order to falsify X, you're going to have to verify not X. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. Okay. How do you falsify X without verifying not X? Um, I've already given you an example of measuring cloth, right? You, you try your best. No, sir. It doesn't work. You, Real world experience you, you, shows that things collapse not, and don't work. You're, you're giving me, you're giving, I'm going to be blunt here. You're giving me mumbo jumbo. Now, falsification. <laughs> it's like mumbo jumbo? Yeah, you're giving me mumbo jumbo. Now, falsification in, in, in entails applying the law of non-contradiction and excluded middle. Do you accept that or not? No, but this is going far how away. Do fall, from your but how, do you fall, how do you falsify something without the fundamental laws of logic, sir? No, already answered your question. There are failures. Uh, there are collapses no, that make you stop and reconsider your... Your assumptions. You're you're giving me more mumbo jumbo. How do you falsify something without <laughs> the law of identity? You? I'll repeat. I'll keep on repeating my question until I get an adult answer. How do you falsify something without the law of identity and non-contradiction? I, I've already answered your question. I mean, you know, no, I'm, I, I'm not, I didn't hear. I didn't you hear. Have, you have disruptions that indicate that you don't understand things, sir. Sure. Do, do you know you since, you, since you since you since you since you raised know. since you raised Popperian falsification? Are you aware of? Uh, are you familiar in the philosophy of science of W. V. Quine and his confirmation holism? As fascinated as I would be to go down that rabbit hole with you. Um, let's, it's not a rabbit hole, sir. Okay. All right. So it's directly related to right. the issue of falsification. I've, I've answered your question about falsification, but um, okay. the point is you have defended your claim. So the, the question I asked earlier was, well, how do you account for the existence of civilizations prior to Christianity and with no contact with Christianity? It's surprising you didn't give this explanation at that point. You yeah, guys were you're ignoring right. my question. I asked you no, about no, W.V. Quine. And W.V. Quine, okay, Quine is a philosopher of interrupting science. Interrupting me. No, I know that, but you're not addressing. You're just simply no. I, I'm right. trying to address the actual no, point not, debated not. instead of getting to something related here. Okay, so right, like you, why we were talking about falsification listen, at all? If you're gonna, so. if you're gonna continue, listen. Um, I, I deal with people like you all the time. If you want to persist in just filibustering and not responding to me in a conversation, then I'll just move on to somebody else. But the reason why I raise the issue of W. V. Quine, another philosopher uh, in in the uh, the area of science, is called the problem of confirmation holism. Okay, confirmation holism is a huge problem for the falsification criterion. It's because when you make an observation that you think falsifies a theory, okay, that observation is supported by what are called auxiliary hypotheses. And you don't know which of any of those auxiliary hypotheses uh, have been falsified or not. It is not possible to falsify uh, all of those auxiliary hypotheses. Therefore, um, this is although, not an area of debate. We agree. Oh, good. Absolutely. So therefore, so therefore, in your in your worldview, you have the, you, when you invoke falsification, you don't have a means to falsify because in order to falsify X, you're going to have to verify not X. And in the absence of verifying not X, you cannot falsify X, sir. So I, I think you've forgotten why the issue of falsifiability came into the conversation. That's why I was trying to return to just summarizing briefly what the context was with civilizations having Can you no respond contact to what with I just Christianity. Said, please? I, I, I'm responding very directly. You seem to regard it as a really positive thing that you resolved the problem of non-Christian civilizations by indicating that your theory is not falsifiable. You think that's a really good thing? Yeah, you're, you're, you see, you're okay, completely. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm you're really going to finish this, sir. I'm really, you're not I'm really going to finish. Right well, you have been talking past me this entire time. You said that this was no, a jumbo and filibustering when I gave you very direct, very. No, numbers. I'm being very direct. You have, you have given me a lot of mumbo jumbo and filibustering. Yeah, yeah, you can, you so can give falsifiability. All you want. Sorry, falsifiability is a good thing if you put forward a theory that's falsifiable. It means that it's clear and can be tested. So it's it's not a it's not a bad oh. thing with theory false viable. Okay, so in your so in your in your so, worldview, right. uh, you should let me finish that sentence. It's really not uh, that right, long sentence. Sure. Okay, so sure. I just say it, 
it is interesting to me that you guys have scored an own goal in removing your theory from the realm of falsifiable things. You've basically said, it, well, it doesn't matter that in India or in Japan they had a civilization because you think God is operating like gravity. That's why I made this comment about gravity invisibly all the time anyway, so it can't be tested. There's no way it can be proven right or wrong. And if so, then okay, but you've actually defeated your own theory because you've removed it from the realm of things that matter, things that can be proven or unproven, because all of those things are falsifiable. Falsifiability is a good thing. So you you have misrepresented the meaning of falsifiability. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. No, sir, what what you're doing is you're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think it's funny that you don't have the foggiest idea of, of what you're talking about, okay? Now, when it comes to falsifiability, you're going, you did not address my point about the law of identity and non-contradiction. Without, without applying the law of non-contradiction, you can't falsify anything. How will you know that a, a state of affairs is false unless you can verify its negation or its denial, okay? Now, you said, you, you raised the issue of testability, okay? Now, does falsification in your worldview require causal relations, laws, and laws of nature? This is not about my worldview. Can you, you've, so you've repeatedly insultingly stated that I don't know what falsifiability means. Okay. Can I, can I ask you, with sorry, me? Sorry, Are you familiar with me? Uh, you're Are really not you familiar, familiar with me. me. Right. I I, I'm, a, I'm a dog with question. a phone. If I very, will ask a question. If very simple question. It, can you define, can you define falsifiability? Okay. Well, what the does concept, falsifiability mean? The, 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 con- the concept of falsifiability means is that when a hypothesis, or a hypothesis or a theory is proposed, is that if it were false, that a set of observations or testing or circumstances could, in principle, show that it is false. Now, you did not address my point. You are filibustering. Now, if you persist in avoiding my questions, then I, w- I will just simply ignore you. Okay, you can giggle and, and chortle all, all you want on here. It doesn't make for a substantive response. Now, you invoked the viability of falsifiability and testing. Okay, in order for there to be falsifiability and testing, okay, are, do the prerequisites of causality and laws of nature have to be in place? So, your view of God is not falsifiable. That's your claim. You, you're not answering my question. When you invoke the concept, but, the viability of false viability, and sir, please don't overtalk me. I'm repeating my question because you're being completely evasive. So here's the question. <laughs> when you invoke the con- the concept, the concept of falsification as being viable and testing as being viable, do those two concepts have prerequisites of causality and laws of nature in order for them to be viable? So you genuinely think you're not derailing this conversation? You really think you're staying I'd like on topic? An answer, I'd like an answer. You, did you invoke falsification and testing? Yes, you did. Does Sorry, testing what? and falsification okay, what's the require... Word uh, please do not overtalk <laughs> me. I will keep on talking until you stop overtalking. We're all terribly now, impressed. Go on. You, ra- you, ra- you, ra- you raise the issue. You see, chortling and pretending you're a stand-up comic is not going to make you look good. It's only going to make you look embarrassed. Now, you raise the issue of falsification and testing as viable concepts. You did so repeatedly. Now, in your worldview, does falsification and testing have the prerequisites of causal relations between events and laws of nature in order for them to be viable concepts? No, I've I've already answered your question. Can you, can you explain to me how you can test something without presupposing there are causal relations between events? Yes, and I already have. You're just restating this question with more and more hostility. But no, I'm waiting I, I'm for not. an answer to my question. I've, I've already given you the answer, right? No, you, you haven't. Can summarize how back from what I've already how, said. I've how repeatedly is, answered how your question. Testing, how is testing a viable concept if you cannot account that there are causal relations between events? So it seems to me that what you're doing is using a smokescreen to get away from the very simple consequence of your acceptance. Oh, I know who you are. Who you are. God. I, I've talked okay. with you Anything before, else? haven't I? Have I've talked with I you don't before listen. a number of times, have I? Yeah, I, I know I have. Now no, I recognize your voice. Before. I know. No, I know who you are. I know exactly who you are now. Okay, good. Now the light went on in my head as to who you are. Now I asked you a question. Does falsifiability, I, does falsifiability and testing as you have invoked it, 
have the prerequisite of causality and laws of nature? You said no. Can you tell me right. how, how? Can you Why tell me how? We can you tell me? Okay, sir, I'm going to keep, I'm gonna keep on talking. The longer you over talk me, I will keep on talking well, until I get done. Is that what you want to debate? I would like the moderator to please step in and mute his microphone. But what he's doing is he's over talking me, trying to shut me down. Now I'm going to ask you a question. That's called iron in the Okay, did you? Uh, since you have asserted here, and everybody heard you say it that the the principle of causality or causal relations between events and laws of nature are not prerequisites for testing now is that is that was that your stipulation um yes however we're okay. not debating the concept okay. of falsifiability now, you're, now, you're, you're derailing you, your own now, argument now, you're debating now, can the you significance tell me of God, can you right? can you tell me can you tell me how either testing or falsifiability uh, can be a viable concept if there are not causal relations between any events. Um, I just want to say, we've never spoken before, by the way. You seem to think we've spoken. We've never spoken before. Okay. Can you tell me how the concept, uh, you invoked the concept of testing as viable, right? No, I didn't. You've really, is, you've is, really is got a problem is, talking is to someone with generosity of spirit. Is observation and testing and falsifiability is, viable like, concepts? Is, does your religion have any love in it? Does it have any generosity of spirit? Okay. Like, why Would can't you extend is, some of those virtues does to falsification, like Does falsification require well, – well, you already, you already answered that falsification does not require um, – that there are causal connections between events. How would you falsify something if there are no causal relations between events? Okay. So are you assigning to me the truth claim? You must realize how absurd this is that I do not think there are cause and effect relationships between things and reality. Like, is that what your argument has to rely on? Inventing a oh. position like that and assigning to me when nothing I've said is, there's just no connection between that and any argument I've made. Like, well, you, you don't think that to any outside observer, this is absurd at this point. Okay, how I is falsification? How, how, exactly falsification how is falsification a meaningful and intelligible concept without there being causal connections between events? Because you said that falsification does not require the presupposition of causal relations and laws of nature. How would you falsify something if there are no causal relations between events? Okay, so. Uh, you actually are attributing to me the view that there are no cause and effect relationships between events. Why would I'll, I defend I'll, that view? I'll, I'll, like that's okay, what you're demanding. I, so, but I mean, you're forcing me off topic. You're you're derailing your own conversation. Mm, no, discussing you the, the concept, significance you of God. The, you, right? You invoke and you, the concept right. of falsification. So look, maybe so. If I'm guilty of, as you say, invoking the concept, which is to say, using the term, I and mean, I think invoke is a really strange word for you to use. Why would you then derail the conversation and insist that I defend the idea that there's no cause and effect relationship? It, it's the because world? that's absurd. Falsification You're reducing is, yourself sir? to absurdity. It's because okay, falsification sir. is Darth's. Tool. Yeah, what it belongs to him, it would, doesn't belong to you, and so he's trying okay, to. Okay, so so Witty, Witty, I'd like to know from you since you interjected the concept of falsification, um, and I can only deem that you consider to be a meaningful and viable concept. How is falsification as a concept meaningful without presupposing that there are any causal connections or relations between events? It, it, do you, what would be the point of arguing that? You've invented a position I don't have and I'm not advancing, and you're demanding that I defend a worldview in which there's no cause and effect relation in reality. What, what does that have to do with anything I raised? What was the actual proposition I made? I, mean, I noticed you never actually summarize or respond to what my own proposition was or what I was debating or even what you were debating at the start of this conversation. This is no longer okay. about the significance of the existence of God or how civilization and cognition op operate in the absence of that God. That was what we were talking about. And you're, f you're derailing your own argument. I don't know if you're aware of the extent to which you're doing it. How, it, how, is, how, it, how is the concept? How is the concept of falsification that you interjected into the conversation a viable and intelligible concept without causal connections between events? So why include that last part that I don't? I mean, I think if you asked, if you had some gener generosity of spirit, if you had some of those virtues Jesus preached, you could ask in an open-minded, honest way, "How is the concept of falsification relevant to this conversation?" And we could talk about that like adults. And I'd be interested to hear your point of view. I don't know. I mean, you seem to respect it. How do you feel about the fact that you've just argued that your own view is not falsifiable? Which you know, if you know the meaning of the term, that's actually a bad thing. That was actually you defeating your own argument and then trying to behave as if you'd scored a point against me. 
How is the concept of falsification a meaningful and intelligible concept without presupposing that there are causal relations between events? So is there any capacity on your part to really talk about the substance of the issue? I mean, what, what, because nobody is arguing that, that cause and effect relationships don't exist in reality. That's totally extraneous. You're just creating a straw man that's in no way relevant to the conversation. Is falsification a, 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 a well, I've asked the question. So you, I mean, you tell me, tell me you're your over, view of talking me. I'm you're all you're over talking me. Okay. Now, how is falsification, the concept of falsification that you have introduced, a viable and intelligible concept without presupposing that there are causal relations between events? Look, if you if you ser seriously feel that falsification is not a viable concept, I'd be willing to hear that. Um, but my impression is you do think it's meaningful. So why don't you just answer your own question? What does it mean to you? See, that with real generosity of spirit and openness and love, I'm actually willing to hear your position. I'm not going to invent a ridiculous claim like you don't even believe in cause and effect and then assign that to you and ask you to refute it. But why don't you tell us what does falsification mean to you? Why does it matter or not matter? I don't know. I don't presuppose I know your your position. And then how do you feel about how this applies to your argument about civilization and God? So okay. What he's doing what, is, I know okay. What, what, you're, what, what Witty is doing is prevaricating. And for those of you out in Rio Linda, if you don't know what prevaricating is, you can look it up. He's completely evading and dodging the question. So I will repeat the question again. Since you have interjected the concept of falsification, as a viable and intelligible, meaningful concept. How is falsification, as you have introduced it, intelligible and meaningful without presupposing that there are causal connections between events? <laughs> I haven't made any claim of that kind. You're attacking an argument that you invented yourself. That's not part of this. And you complain about prevarication and evasion you prevaricated and evaded on each of the points I made, starting with my just asking you, why is it then that civilization and philosophy have made so much progress in India and Japan and elsewhere without the existence of your God? You you didn't deal with that very well. You also how, prevaricated and how, collapsed on that. How is falsification a viable concept without presupposing causal relations between events? Uh, I have no position on that. That's not what I'm debating. I mean, if it's you not, do, you do, you do not, have a position it on it because I, because no, I, I don't you, do have, you do it. Okay. You do have a position because a few minutes ago I asked you, I said, are causality and laws of nature necessary preconditions to falsification and right. testing? And you said, and my you opinion said is no. no. Right. right. So, you have, you, so you do have an opinion on it. Well, why not? Why not just respect not? my so opinion? Please do not over talk me. Not? Please do not over talk me. Now, I will ask you again, since you denied to everybody in the room that uh, causal connections between events and laws of nature are not a necessary prerequisite for testing and falsification, then can you tell me how is testing and falsification a meaningful concept without there being causal relations between events? If there were no causal relations between events, how would you be able to reason when all the different events in your brain had no connection to each other, nor would any one uh, thought in a time index have any other indication with, with another thought? So how would you be able to uh, falsify something if your individual and sequential thoughts had no causal relations to each other? Can you answer that? Answer that? Um, whatever answer is given is totally irrelevant to the topic that's supposed to be debated here. I mean, you know, you're, you're just raising an argument that you invented out of thin air yourself. That has nothing to do with my position, and that has nothing to do with the actual debate being proposed. So you've you've created a huge digression and derailed your own, derailed your own argument. Do you have an answer and to my question? A, uh, yes, but I mean, you know, I don't really want to talk about nihilist epistemology with you. It's not what's being discussed. Here. Okay. So, so in other words. Testing and falsification are viable without there being any causal connections. So in terms of your brain and your thoughts, there's no relationship at any one given moment or thought sequence to another thought sequence. Did, did you, do so you recognize? You, you're over talking. You recognize. You're over talking. You just, yeah, you're but you're attributing a me. philosophy to you're me. You're over talking me. You're over talking me. You're over talking me, sir. Now, 
This is this is the absurdity of your position. I don't know who. That's you not my position. Fooling. You're over talking me. You're over talking. I am. Me. You're over talking me. Now I don't know who you think you're fooling by the prevaric prevarication and filibustering here. I, even atheists in the room know how patently absurd you are saying when falsification and testing do not require causal relations between events or that there be laws laws of nature. If there if there were no causal relations between events, then your reasoning would be simply absurd. There would be no connection between your thoughts whatsoever. But so you so created the bottom, a whole the bottom, philosophy the bottom line that I have never is, espoused. I'm not, done. I'm not, not done. a single one of those so things you that told I me, You told me that falsification does not need causal relation. So how could you have reasoning processes, cognitive reasoning processes, without there being causal relations in your brain? How would that? How how is that possible, sir? So look, I I really do feel nothing but pity for you because I think you're unaware of the extent to which you're lying, not just to me but to yourself. The question you asked me was not, do I think cause and effect relationships exist in the world? And this is hilariously parallel to the point you made earlier about the existence of God versus the belief in God. You asked me if I have to believe in the order of nature, if I have to believe in a set of axioms in order to be able to test and prove things through falsification. And I answered your question about belief. And as you yourself very much know, belief in God is a separate thing from the existence of God. And belief in those types of axioms and principles is different from the mere happenstance of cause and effect existing in the world. You've now taken quite a long time. You are genuinely filibustering. I never have been to construct a philosophy totally irrelevant to this conversation that you think you're refuting. And I asked in a totally good natured and open minded way, well, how do you guys address India, Japan, etc.? How do you address falsification of views? And this is how you respond. And it is pathetic. I, I know you may feel you've accomplished something great in defending your faith and defending your worldview, but it is truly pathetic. Okay. Does reason does falsification require reasoning? What what would either answer contribute to the conversation? You're asking questions that are spurious in the strictest sense of the term spurious. Like if I asked you, what is your position on abortion? That might be a fair question, but it's spurious. Like it's, it's a legitimate question, but whether you say yes or no, good or bad, it's completely irrelevant to the conversation. Can't you recognize that? Can't you recognize the extent to which you've lied and filibustered and derailed your own argument? And you've ended up in a place where you're repeatedly demanding answers to questions where neither answer I could give would matter in any way to the debate at hand. That's spurious. That's irrelevant. You have introduced the concept of falsification as a, a viable practice. Does the practice of falsification, as you have invoked it, require reason? Hey, again, I can answer this question, but it doesn't in any way help this argument. It's, I mean, you can answer, I can ask you, are you currently on antidepressants? You sound like you are. But it's irrelevant. I'd be interested to know if you're on SSRI antidepressants. The kind of strange monotone your voice has really does sound to me like you're on some pretty Can heavy psychiatric medication. Can I position real quick? Because this just but, like on a you know, it's device. irrelevant. No, it's not relevant. It's totally relevant. What Darth is saying is you're trying to make a claim about some fact of the world. You're, you're appealing to the, to the fact of existence, right? You're saying that people were better off without even knowing about God. Or they were doing fine without knowing about God. What Darth is asking is Darth is asking how are the state of affairs possible when you don't have a precondition or a context in which to view the universe? That's, what, that's why he keeps asking you, do you believe in falsification? Because in order for you to understand the existence of anything, you necessarily need to believe in some rule of logic or whatever. And he's trying to find out what your justification for that is. That's why he keeps yeah, uh, yeah. I I don't need any help from you, Destiny. Um, well, Witty, you, do, you actually you raise the issue. You, you raise the issue. You raise the issue. You raise the issue, Witty. You raise the issue, Witty. You raise the issue. I'm asking you the question: uh, Does does falsification require? A reasoning process. It's a very simple question. Can I actually? I can just do Darth's argument without sounding like a cunt, and then we can get to. All right. Listen. Yeah. If the moderators aren't going to take control of this room and allow these disruptions, then there's no point. Um, you know, I, I complimented the room owner that uh, there was a minimal trolling. N now I may have to take back that compliment. No one is trolling. Really the out of troll okay, I'll top in for a minute here. Let's. Okay. So, 
do you really does it does it have to be one by one can it not be free form as long as it's one person at a time i mean i don't have a problem with the thought of destiny popping in no here the bo- i mean it, there. yeah it, it's just for him to steal more people he has to yo 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 don't talk don't talk over me just let darth answer please yeah, it's just it's just absolutely embarrassing that I'm just asking simple, straightforward questions, and all we're getting is just blatant prevarication. Now, the question is very simple. Since you have raised the concept of falsification in your worldview, vis-a-vis God and the Bible, is does falsification require reason in your worldview? Okay, I, I just want to pop in here. I think it is fair that everyone gets a chance to talk. So let's let Destiny say his piece, and then you can pick up, or Isaac can pick up, or whoever. All right, I'm, 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 I'm done right now. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. Typical. Well, Victory. <laughs> Victory. Okay, well, actually, in that case, hey, the um, Dest- one. Well, one, one second, guys. Come on, stop talking to me. Destiny, did you still want to talk to Sai for a minute? Yeah, I was actually really interested. I've already done. Sai, do you know Destiny? Um, hang on a second. Sure. Um, I think, I, like I said, I just found out about uh, Darth a couple of days ago, so I've been listening to some of his exchanges, and I have heard that Destiny pop into one of them, so that's my only familiarity with him. He, he's a well-known YouTuber and Twitch streamer type guy. Um, you know, you can disengage at any point if you want to, but I think he wants to, you know, pop you a few questions, if that's okay. Yeah, sure, no problem. Destiny's mic is chappy. Is my mic really fucked right now, or? Yes, it is. Here, I'll, t- I'll turn the bit rate down one second. No, fuck. It's because I'm on a laptop. Stream the shit, man. Is it still really bad? Are you using a console? No, I'm using my laptop. Here, I'll, I'll restart my computer. So, someone else go. Give me, like, two minutes or So how about the weather? Everything's on fire in the west. Damn. Nine out of ten people could not start a conversation if the weather didn't change. Fruit. So much rain everywhere. It's pretty. Uh, it's actually pretty cold in the east, to be honest. It's uh, actually in the seventies today, low seventies. I swear, this precept people really do just believe in God based on nothing, an assumption based on nothing, but they have clever ways of pretending like they don't. (laughs) They've put themselves in a dishonest box to a point that they actually can't be argued out of. That's just the whole point of it. So you're saying that because it's not falsifiable, therefore it's not valid? In a way, Who's that reference to? Well, whoever whoever is making the claim about falsifiability that I heard earlier. Yeah, that's the main problem I have with presupposition It's damn near unfalsifiable. And most people that use it are just using it to make knowledge impossible. So are, are you saying that all claims need to be falsifiable in order to be valid? From my worldview, yeah. No, that's, that's not true. Not to, not to like be rude and interject, but Dustin just said he's back. Wait, does my mic sound like shit still, or is it okay? Yeah, it's better. Same. Sounds like shit. What? Wait, really? Yeah. Just turn them up. That's the only way to fix it. Or is it like super fucked? We can code. You're botting. We can, yeah, you, you, we can still understand what you're saying, okay. so don't worry. As long as you can. As long as basically you and him talk, we'll be fine. Okay, we great. can all hear you. I want to go. Okay. I'm a, I'm a big boy atheist. Sorry. Can you make me? Are you ready to be stuck in the circle again? No. I can escape. Oh, you're going to break the circle? Okay. Yeah, awesome. Sure. I'm actually excited bar- to see this. I can barely hear you, so I might ask you to repeat something, so go on. Okay, yeah, no problem. Okay, yeah, no problem.
Wait, does he start or do I start? Find out. Well, I was told you wanted to talk to me. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how much longer I'm going to stick around. That last 45 minutes or whatever, that exchange, that was brutal. Uh, hopefully they don't go like this often because uh, I thought I would be interested in this uh, venue. But that, that, was, uh, that was horrible. Well, with you and Darth's dishonesty, I doubt it. Well, hey, chill. Who was that? No, 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 no. I'm not saying it against his character. I'm saying his arguments are. That's it. I'm not trying I'm not to be rude. All right, this is Monterey. We're going to let Destiny ask this question to uh, Sai. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so I'll be out. My, my problem with the presuppositional position is that I feel like your the, the validity of your axiomatic assumptions are equal to mine. So, for instance, I say that I assume you know logic or reason or causality, and you say that somehow you can define some precursor to that, but it feels like when we get into an actual discussion about this, your definition or your ability to perceive God's revelation or something is just as arbitrary as any other axiomatic foundational belief. How do you respond to that? Uh, I don't know if you were here earlier when we talked about the difference between certain branches of presuppositionalism, but um, it would be a Clarkian who would say that um, our foundations are axiomatic, but I would not say that. My foundation is not an unjustifiable axiom. Mine is a necessary presupposition which is proven by the impossibility of the contrary as revealed by god okay when you say proven by the, the the revelation of god how how do you know that you are receiving a revelation from god the same way you do well can you tell me how you do the same way you do well the thing is um i, I say that god makes us certain of some things. He makes us certain of things innately. He makes us certain of things via our sense and reasoning. And I would say the only way that you can argue against that would be by saying it's impossible for God to exist. Now, the God of the Bible, if you want to say it's impossible that he exists, we can go there. But the God of the Bible makes us know things for certain. And that's my foundation. That's the foundation of my worldview. Okay. Do you acknowledge that your worldview is circular or do you reject that? It is absolutely circular, but uh, as Van Til would say, it's more of a spiral. He would say it's a virtuous circle rather than a vicious circle. And the thing is, I mean, you would have to admit that all worldviews at their foundation are circular. Like if oh, I were I to ask you- I totally you, admit that, but the, the issue is it feels like the presuppositionalist pretends that their circle is more perfect than another one, which is what I don't understand. Well, here's the question. This is how we get out of that circle. We, I would ask you, is it impossible for God to exist? And if you say, no, it's not impossible, well, according to the Christian worldview, God reveals things to us such that we can know them for certain. So that's how we escape the circle, because we appeal to something that's outside of that plane. We appeal to God in order to justify our reasoning. So we're, I'm not saying I reason that my reasoning is valid. I'm saying that God intervenes and makes us know that our reasoning is valid. Yeah, but in order, the thing is, in order for you to perceive the teachings of God or to perceive anything from God, you would have to justify the existence of your senses. The senses are the ways that we gain information of the outside world. So I don't understand how you can justify trusting your senses. For instance, if I were to pose to you the question, how do you know there's a God and not a great deceiver? You would have no way to discern between those two things, no? No, no, no. I'm not saying that I necessarily justify them. I say God justifies them. God makes us know things for certain via our sense and reasoning. He makes us know things certain uh, through innately. He makes us know things. So how God does that is really irrelevant. So in order for you to argue against that claim, you would basically have to say it's impossible for God to exist. And if you're saying that, then we can go there. If you're not saying I'm not, that, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying. I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. No, no worries. Go on. Um, so I'm not trying to say. So my position, if you were to ask me if God exists, I wouldn't say yes or no. I would say that we, we can't have knowledge of that necessarily. We, we just aren't equipped to have knowledge of whether or not God exists. Yeah, I understand that. But then of the two of us, I would say that I have an avenue to certainty, whereas you don't. And if you want to say that you have one, I'm all ears. Why do we need an absolute certainty for anything? Well, I'm saying that I have an avenue to certainty. I'm saying without that, that you can't even justify one knowledge claim to even 0.0001%. So, you know, I understand that people, you know, are, they don't like the idea of going to certainty or they're saying that it's not necessary. You know, I think that there's huge problems with, with that. Um, but I'm saying that without God, you can't even know anything to 0.001%. Sure. And if somebody wants to say that they do, I'm, I'm all ears. Yeah, so I think the reason why people have an issue with that is because what you're saying seems to, and I'm not trying to make an accusation, but it seems to fly in the face of how we understand most systems uh, of, of logic or rational. For instance, we can take an arbitrary axiom and then we can build arguments off of that. And those arguments will be valid if they adhere and conform to that particular system. You don't have to justify the axiom in order for the, for the truth claims 
pass that axiom to be justified because whenever you're justifying a claim, you're always doing it in relation to a specific axiom. So for instance, if I say two plus two is four, I'm not saying I have absolute knowledge that the entity two plus the app plus the absolute knowledge of the entity two combined will equal the absolute knowledge of the entity four. I'm saying with respect to what we assume, you know, mathematics and, and those assumptions to be that that would equal four. I, th I think that's how most people talk, right? It's a form of contextualism. Right, but the thing is you're invoking many axioms. You're invoking an axiom that your um, cognitive faculties are functioning properly. And I would say without that, that you can't even base anything off of any axioms. So, you know, that would be my question. And that's, I know people don't like when I do that, but then I would say, well, how do you know that when you reason about axioms that your cognitive uh, faculties are functioning properly? Well, sure. And I, and I mean, this is, um, th this would be something that, um, is it Descartes who, who had the, the, the demon or whatever? Um, I, I would argue that I can only exist assuming that I exist and assuming that my senses are true. It's possible that there could be, you know, somebody creating an illusion before me, but I don't make a, I don't make an absolute knowledge claim about that. And I would argue that my ability to do so is the equivalent to yours, um, because yours is ultimately reducible to circular logic anyway, right? So if somebody would ask me, can you prove, you know, that everything you see isn't a dream or isn't an illusion? I would go, no, I can't have any knowledge of that. So I'm going to function as though, you know, it's not a deception, but I can't truly make a claim one way or the other. And I would argue that you're in the same boat as me. Right, but you would be arguing that from a boat where you can't know anything. And as far as Descartes goes, I'm sure you're familiar with Bertrand Russell's refutation of uh, Descartes, because he would say, I think, therefore I am. But uh, it was Bertrand Russell that pointed out that he was begging the question, because his first premise was, I think. And his conclusion was, therefore I am. But he was ex assuming his existence in the first premise by saying, I think. In order to not beg the question, his first premise should have been there thinking going on, and you cannot get from there to I exist. Well, uh, yeah, but I mean, when you say that God's revelation reveals himself, that's also begging the question, right? If, if you admit that your foundational logic is circular, then that's by definition begging the question as well, right? That's where we all are. We, we can't possibly justify things outside the boundaries of human knowledge, right? Like where does logic come from? I think that's the issue with that. An I don't want to say an atheist, but that's like a, like a, an, an a non-religious person would argue that there are certain things that exist outside the boundaries of human logic that we just can't justify, like causation. But that's just it. We just can't make claims one or the other. For you to retreat to a position of circular logic and then pretend that you've justified all of that, um, I don't think that's a fair position to take. And then to to take issue with anybody that doesn't make the same you know type of knowledge claim that they have their own circular uh, god that justifies a position or whatever. No, I understand what you're saying. However, when I say that my foundation is ultimately circular as yours is, I'm not saying that I'm begging the question. I'm not saying that I'm committing a logical fallacy when I appeal to God. Because, like I say, unless you are going to say it's certain that God does, uh, does not exist, then you would have to concede an avenue to certainty to me. And that's what I'm, I'm basing it on. And you, sure, you are free to reject my claim. You might call it question begging or whatever. I say it's not question begging. It's necessarily circular. However... According to my worldview, I have that avenue to certainty. I say, well, what's yours? Yeah, and I would just say I don't need that avenue to certainty to make any claims past that. Right, but is that a certain? You don't need it. Exactly. Is that a certain knowledge claim? No, and that's I, where I, we run I, into I the problem. Of course not. I would never claim to have certainty one way or the other. Really? Yeah, but those are all certain knowledge claims, even though you deny them. But I would say it doesn't even matter because I'm saying that unless you start with God, you can't know anything to any degree, to any percentage. Yeah, but and that's but this why. Is like this is kind of the this is the fallacy. This is the line of thinking that I don't like that presuppositionalists engage in. That that this idea that if I can't justify an ax, this is like the primary disagreement. If I can't justify an axiom, every statement that I build off of that axiom is necessarily invalid. I, I, I think it's a ridiculous claim. Look, you know, I, I how do you know anything? That's all. How do you know anything without God? Well, like so, you you keep. So I think that you're kind of playing this kind of word game where you're saying, how do you know anything? And you're trying to pretend that's a really simple question. That's not a really simple question. Anybody that's ever experienced an altered state of not mind on a psychedelic, anybody that's ever been in a coma or when you're in a dream, you know, the, the question, how can you know anything? That's actually an incredibly difficult question to answer. And you pose it as kind of like a matter of fact, like, well, LOL, how can you know anything? When the reality is well, we can't, right? Well, Destin, let me interject here. Um, I, I imagine that you're familiar with debating a bunch of other Christians who are in this to win something or, you know, to, to pose things that might trip somebody up. I really don't give a rip for that. You know, 
I left my job. I was making over $100,000 a year. I left my job because I saw people misrepresenting the God that I adored. And I love professed unbelievers enough to take my time out to make next to nothing to come to talk to people like you. So when I ask you, how do you know anything? It's not to trip you up. It's because I love you. And it's because I want you to be saved. And the clearest way that I can show that in Scripture is the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So what that basically means, unless you start with God, you can't know anything. And now, look, I could preach the gospel to you. I could share things with you. But when people deny the existence of God, then my go-to is the very easiest thing to prove in Scripture that God is necessary for knowledge. So I'm just asking you, how do you know anything without God? I'm not interested in the long philosophical debate. I'm interested in your salvation. Yeah, I understand that you're not interested in the long philosophical debate, but you're asking one of the most difficult, or what I would argue is an impossible to answer question. And it sounds as though you're, you're saying it in kind of this, I'm not trying to use accusatory language, but you, you make it sound like such a casual question to ask somebody how they can know anything, when the reality is at 100% certainty as a human, we can't really know anything. But this no, idea that you have to have some presuppositional foundation to know to know anything or to understand anything is as ridiculous as me arguing that somebody needs to be a computer programmer to play a video game or that somebody needs to know how to build a car in order to drive one. I don't think that anybody would make those claims that if I want to play a game, I need to know every single piece of code that goes into it in order to build. Like, how can I truly say that uh, Ryu is better than Ken in Street Fighter if I don't know the programming of the game? Well, I mean, we can all understand that I'm saying it with respect to the game, much the same way that any atheist or philosopher would say, you know, I can't 100% know that causality exists, but with respect to the universe and the basic laws that we all kind of agree exist, I can, I can say it with respect to that. Well, you have to understand that for a Christian, it's a very easy question. I have a revelational epistemology. I know things by or through revelation from God, so I can answer that question. So I think that people who um, reject God, I think it should be a simple question for them. And if it's not, that's fine. I don't mind people taking their time and coming back with some kind of answer. But it's not asking like something like, you know, I'm not saying that you can't drive a car, you know, even if you don't know how a car works. I'm just asking you how you can make sense of cars in your worldview. Sure. I so believe is, I believe that you can drive cars. I believe that you can know things. But I'm just asking, according to your worldview, how you're able to do that. And I apologize if it's a very difficult question. I don't mind waiting for people to take all the time they want to tell me how they can know anything without God. I've just been doing this for a number of years, and I've never heard anybody give an answer that comes anywhere close to being able to know anything to any degree without God. Sure, and I, and I understand your position. The, the, my hatred of that position comes from the fact that it appears that you're looking for an easy out for an incredibly complicated question. How can you know anything for true? And you go, well, you know, my senses have, you know, worked with God's revelation to reveal something. It's like, okay, well, you're not really doing a, a good service. You're doing a disservice to, to the entire branch of epistemology to pretend that you can define knowledge using some vacuous circular position saying that God has ordained my senses to work because God exists to ordain my senses to work so that I can perceive God ordaining my like I, I just that that feeling is so empty and hollow to me that it doesn't make me feel any better about the foundation of knowledge or give me um, any kind of way to feel like I better understand the universe or know things. Yeah, the thing is, I don't want you to feel better. I want you to repent and put your trust in Jesus Christ. So I'm asking you a, a question, which, like I say, is very simple for Christians to answer. And I don't know where else you would want me to go with that, but I'm just saying it's very simple to show in Scripture the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And I want you to reflect on that. Of course, you're not going to like that line of questioning, but because, you know, Scripture would say that you hate God and you love your sin more than you love God and you want to be God. And that's the first temptation in the Garden of Eden. You know, Satan said to Adam and Eve, if you eat of this fruit, you'll be like God. So you're ba basically being God and you're actually blaspheming him when you say you can have these things without God. So I very simply ask, how can you know anything without God? And if you don't want to answer that, if you think it's too difficult, that's fine. I don't mind talking to somebody else. Yeah, I mean, well, this is, I mean, that's not really much we can go on from here. But yeah, this is kind of like the foundational disagreement. I guess to summarize my position, um, I mean, the, the, the the thing is that you pose a question that sounds very simple, but I believe that the answer, and, and most people, I don't want to appeal to authority or consensus, but like most people who've studied philosophy would agree that like asking the question or answering the question of how can we know anything is an incredibly, potentially insurmountable question to, to ask. And of course, it's easy for you because you have your circular position to fall back on, but I feel like it's a little bit disingenuous to just pose that simple question. And if somebody can't answer it, you kind of throw in, well, God can answer it because he's well, the circle through which we can interpret that. That's my position. Well, okay. here's the problem. When we engage each other, we both make knowledge claims. So I don't think it's unfair if you make a knowledge claim for me to turn around and say, well, how do you know that? Because I don't mind when people say, well, Sai, how do you know that? 
So if we're going to make knowledge claims, I say that knowledge is a tool of Jesus Christ. Logic yeah, is a I'm tool of... Making, well, I'm let me finish. Oh, yes. Let me finish. Logic, uh, reason, uniform nature, these are all tools of Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to relinquish them to you in order to have a discussion where people want to insult God, where people want to argue against the God that I adore. So I understand that, you know, you might think it's a philosophical trick or whatever, but I'm just saying that these things are tools of Jesus Christ, and I just will not relinquish them to somebody to argue against Jesus Christ. Okay. And I would just say that the knowledge claims we make are, are different, that they sound the same, but they're not. For instance, when I make the knowledge claim that um, causality exists, I'm not making that claim that I can know 100% certainly that causality exists. That knowledge claim is different than the claim that you would make saying that you understand the ultimate authority of the universe or something. These two claims are different. But I, I think that this, this is kind of our spot that we can never agree on. So. Um, well, I agree with you that they are uh, definitely different, but again, of the two of us, I can have certainty, and I'm just waiting for somebody from the other worldview to say how they can have certainty or even knowledge to any degree, and all I get is, well, it's too difficult, it's a philosophical question, we've disagreed about this for millennia or whatever, and I say, well, that's fine, and I hope that um, people repent and put their trust in Jesus Christ before it's too late. Okay, cool. All right, thanks for the conversation. All righty. Yeah, it was nice talking with you. I have a problem. Oh, oh, wait, no, no, no. One, one sec. Sorry, Lightworker. We got someone before you. Um, So, Sai, you said you're on about 45 minutes, so I guess you have like 20-something left. Uh, there's one more person who's going to come in. He's a fairly well-known YouTuber, uh, JF Garapi. Are you down for one more before you uh, head off? Yeah, sure. Actually, I've been on for an hour and 35 minutes now, So, but yeah, I'll talk to him. Uh, yeah, it's getting late, but uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, and I'm sorry to Destiny, but I need to just... Oh, he's not even listening right now, so I just have to boot him out of this because JF will not go anywhere where Destiny is. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, but you don't know why, so... Yeah, okay, that's fair. I apologize. Okay, so it'll just take him a minute or two to get in here. Um, whoever that was, Lightworker, you can ask your question while uh, JF just makes his way over here. Okay. Uh, we can't hear you at all, man. You're botting. Wait, can, I, can you guys hear me now? Yep, yes. we can hear you. So my problem with presuppositionalism is that it's basically unfalsifiable because anyone can use their religion as their necessary justification for all of their knowledge. And that's basically the problem that I have. I can just claim to be a Muslim and just use the Quran and say that the Quran has revealed to me that it is the final book of Allah and that there is no... God, but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. And I could just use your same arguments for Islam versus Christianity. And because of that, it is basically unfalsifiable. Well, there's a couple of points there. And I don't mind going down the Islam route, but um, what does the Quran say about the Bible? It's corrupt. Exactly. No, 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 no. But what does the, the Quran believe that the Bible is before it was corrupted? It was part of the book of... The way how it was written is that they referred to the Bible as another testament. That's it. Right, right. It believes that it's the words of Allah. It's a, it believes it's a previous revelation of Allah. And why, And you're saying that they don't believe it now because it's been corrupted. But what does the Quran say about whether the words of Allah can be corrupted? The, Allah, the words of Allah is basically infallible. So that wouldn't make any sense. Allah's that, words are final. That's right. So... The Quran states that the Bible is a previous revelation of Allah. The Quran also states that the words of Allah cannot be corrupted. And then the Quran further states that the Bible, or the Muslims further state that the Bible has been corrupted. And that's a refutation of Islam. Because if the Quran is true, the Bible is true. And because the Bible is true, the Quran is false. But the other thing that you said is that a claim needs to be falsifiable in order to be true. Is that fair? Yes, especially for all empirical claims, because when someone tells me something that is unfalsifiable, it's kind of hard to discern whether or not it is actually truth value. Okay, could you do me a favor? Could you falsify the claim that all claims need to be falsifiable in order to be true? Probably not. That's a bit of a problem. I know. That's why I don't really deal with unfalsifiable claims like that. My epistemology is a pragmatist. So I don't really care about truth value claims in and of itself. 
Well, pragmatism fails in that pragmatism has to have a proper goal. And without a proper goal, uh, pragmatism just simply doesn't work. I mean, pragmatism can show you a lot of things if you have a proper goal. But uh, I'm saying that um, without God, you can't even define a proper goal. So why do I need God to define a proper goal? I can define my own goals. No, but the thing is, you, that would be an arbitrary goal. Not it wouldn't really, be... because I defined it. So what? Yeah, that's the very de definition of arbitrary. Not really, because I made it my goal. So what? I'm just saying, like, why would I want to be a Christian if I can't really make empirical claims regarding Christianity? And if I was a Muslim, Muslim that's the same problem. Because at the end of the day, both of these religions have the same aesthetic weight to them. Well, so, I just gave you a refutation of Islam, so I know if you don't want to buy it, that's fine. It doesn't bother me. Wait, wait. Give me back the refutation of Islam again. Sorry. Um, I would ask a Muslim, how do you know anything? They would say, by revelation from Allah in the Quran. I say, okay, what does the Quran say about the Bible? And they will say that the Quran says the Bible is a previous revelation of Allah. And then I say, well, why don't you believe it today? And they say, well, the, the Bible's been corrupted. And there's other evidential issues with that because the Quran was written in 680. We have complete Bibles from 480, but I'm not an evidentialist. But I would say, okay, so the Quran uh, says that the Bible is a previous revelation of Allah. Further, it says that the words of Allah cannot be corrupted, and you claim that the Bible's been corrupted. I say, that's a huge problem. It cannot be both. Oh, I see your point now. Point now, okay. All right. Well, it was, it was nice talking with you. See you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Okay. Um, so, yep, we're still going to be waiting one or two minutes for JF. So, if someone else wants to crack a few questions, go ahead. Yeah, I got a question for Sai. Um, go for it, go for it. Just for clarification, to understand your position a bit, uh, a bit better, um, would you say that some of your or your general position about God and your worldview? is like absolute so you really think it, it's it's 100 percent true and there's no doubt or like do you know what i mean um yeah i would say that the that god is necessary for intelligibility and yes i'm 100 certain of that but the thing is I, i'm saying that it's epistemically the case that means it's a proposition that cannot fail to be true because if you reject it then you have no means by even to even question it so yes i would say it's a certain claim that god exists so so that's uh, very different to, for example, Destiny's uh, worldview, where he would say, well, I can't make any, everything from his point of view is like, he's not certain that something is 100% true. So he always has doubt about everything. He questions everything, even the basic axioms like he, he holds. So I just want to make that clear so I understand you better. Thank you. Well, yeah, no problem. But I'm saying that um, he will say something like that, that he doubts everything, but he won't live like that. Nobody lives like that. And I'm saying that when people um, um, go through their lives making knowledge claims, you know, believing things to be true, um, appealing to the uniformity of nature, all of those things, that's inconsistent with their stated beliefs. And that when people live, they really that's when they really show their pre-commitment to God, when they assume things like logic, science, you know, uh, rationality, truth, all these things, that shows their pre-commitment to God. Yeah, okay, I understand. So it's, for example, like many people don't believe in free will, but the the way they see themselves or talk to others is like in the context of they believe in free will. Somehow they act like it. Uh, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah, I would yeah. say that's true to some degree, but I don't believe in free will either. So, but yeah, I, believe, I know. I believe in free choice. I believe that our wills are in bondage to our natures, and you know that's more of a um, a, a in house debate that I don't mind having with people. But uh, that's more of a question that I engage with uh, with Christians. Okay. Yeah, I was just um, about that absolute uh, um, thing, and <laughs> that really interests me. So, thank you, man. Yeah, you're welcome. It was nice to meet you. Uh, can I say something? Uh, well, actually, what you said earlier about the word of Allah, that's actually false. It only applies to the Quran. So only the Quran can't be changed. It's not like all. It's, it doesn't apply to like the Injil and the Torah. Injil being the Bible. Well, um, I think you should probably read your Quran. Right. That's not an argument. Um well, if you go to my website, the other worldview section, the one under Islam, it has all the uh, 
Quranic uh, citations of uh, where the Quran believes or claims that the Bible is the words of Allah. And there is no differentiation in the Quran between the words of Allah in the Injil and in the Quran. So that's a differentiation that people make outside of the Quran. It's something that they simply can't justify. The, can you wait? What's the website called? I'll take a look at it. Um, My website is proofthatgodexists.org. And if you go under the other worldview tabs, you will see a tab for uh, Islam. All right, sure. I'll check it out. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. I'll check it out. Yeah, um, Sai, I have a really quick question for you. Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, it's going good. Uh, you know, since we're on a vegano server, um, I was just wondering, uh, what are your thoughts on veganism? Um, you know, I have uh, friends who are post-millennial, and they actually are very supportive of veganism. And they say that the death of animals is actually part of the fall, and that eventually um, we will all become vegans. Now, personally, I am not a vegan, and and I don't know if I'm um, in line with them on that reasoning, but I am very sympathetic to it. Um, I just happen to like meat. But no, I, I think that, um, yeah, I'm very sympathetic to the post-millennial view that these things will improve uh, prior to Christ's return. I mean, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, since this is a vegan channel, that you've seen that they are making products that are very similar to meat now that require no animal products. And I'm really excited about that. I think if that were the case, then I would definitely eat that instead of cow. Well, uh, that's good to hear. Um, yeah, that's called lab-grown meat. And uh, within like the next 20, 30 years, yeah, that's definitely going to take off. So, you know, I'm happy to hear that you're uh, open-minded about it. Uh, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. I, You know, I didn't even think it would be that far away. I've seen some videos where, you know, people have tasted this stuff and uh, they could not tell the difference. And, like, I'm really excited about that. Can I be heard? I'm just trying my push to talk. I can hear you. Can okay. you hear him there, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I, have yeah, a I can hear him fine. Um, you're not an evidentialist, I right? So um, you take the presuppositionalist approach. But I, I have a question. Um, it seems like uh, when we look at the Bible, we see either prophets or even Jesus himself prevent, um, present evidence uh, for his claims. Like I'll allude to uh, Thomas, the interaction between Thomas and Jesus, right? Where Jesus presented evidence that he wasn't crucified on the cross, as opposed to appealing to a kind of presuppositionalist approach. I was wondering um, if there, if you believe there's any other cases in which the evidentialist approach is appropriate. Um, well, I would say that every case where evidence was presented in Scripture, if it was done so, it was to prove the deity of Christ. It was not for the existence of God, that these people already assumed that God exists. And there are cases like the um, prophets of Baal, you know, Elijah and the prophets of Baal, which I've debated with evidentialists uh, many times. So I would say that there are evidences given in, in Scripture for the deity of Christ. But another thing I say to ev evidentialists is, is that the evidence that was given in Scripture for the deity of Christ was miracles. And I say, if you want to be consistent with giving evidence according to Scripture, if you can do miracles, go for it. I just don't believe anybody can today. But when you look at the verses, like specifically how I believe, as it Romans, I'm, I'm not so sure on my, my uh, scriptural um, uh, I'm not, I don't have it memorized, but uh, it's the idea that men are left without an excuse because of creation. You know, God's attributes can be seen in creation. So I, I don't see how, um, I, I can see how if evidentialists would look in creation, whether it be, there be a biologist or a chemist, and see evidence, right, that there might be a, a designer, right? Um, it seems like those inferences aren't um, uh, anti-biblical. No, no but the, well, the thing is that Romans 1 says is the people are without excuse for the evidence they already have. And like I tell people, I say Romans 1 is not a court case, it's a sentencing. So if an evidentialist were to say that Romans 1 is an, is an example of evidential apologetics, I say, well, fine, let's say that there's a person that you're about to give this whole boatload of evidence to, and just before you get to them, they get hit by a bus and they die. I ask the evidentialist, Do that, does that person have an excuse when they stand before God? And to a man, they'll say, no, they don't have an excuse. And I say, well, why not? It's just well, according to Romans chapter one, they have enough evidence. So I'm not going to give them more evidence. Now, the thing is, if an evidentialist were to say to me that I'm giving evidence to expose the suppression of truth, I would say, go nuts. But they don't do that. They're giving evidence to try to convince them that God exists when scripture says everybody already knows. 
Okay, thank you. By the way, my, Danny, my pleasure. By the way, Danny, didn't Jesus, as he as he said to to Thomas, and he said, "Here, put your hand here. Put your hand here." But then he also tell him, "Blessed are those that have not seen and yet believe." I think so. Yes, that's correct. I I would say that Thomas was sinning. Um, so I, can I explore a little bit further? Because um, the other guy isn't here yet, so maybe we have some time. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, would you... Uh, I just asked you a bunch of questions, or some uh, questions. Would you say that everything, if you, if boiled down, boiled down is... Sorry, I'm German, my English is not that, <laughs> that great. Ich habe Deutsch in um, Schule für vier Jahre gelernt. <laughs> Ja, wir können Deutsch sprechen, wenn du willst, aber ich glaube, da kommen wir nicht weiter. <laughs> uh, meine Deutsch ist nicht, nicht so gut. <laughs> okay. So, um, would you say that everything comes down to the brain? So, um, everything you experience, everything, every knowledge you have is really um, in your brain. So, would you say that if you're, if I stab your brain somehow or, or alter your brain, then your knowledge changes and stuff like that because they i think can be tested like lobotomy or stuff like that would you would you say that everything comes down to your brain um i really have not done much study in that area but i would liken it to like a, a television set that you can um, make a television inoperable by maybe sticking something into the screen but that does not mean it's not getting the signal and i believe that we have an um an a an aspect to our uh, brains that is not physical, like our minds. Like, I don't believe, uh, I don't know where our minds are, but I would say that if you were to affect the brain, that what is in the mind might not be able to get out. But I don't I don't know the state, because I've never been in that state. But like I say, I, I would liken it to like, if you smash a television set, it, you know, it might not be able to transmit that signal, but I defy anybody to tell me that it's not getting the signal. Okay, I try to I try to understand that because for me it's like everything can be really boiled down to okay, so you would say there's something something outside of of the brain and that uh, influences the brain and what you think and you would call it like God or something like that, right? Well, I would say the mind is not the brain. And now this is a very interesting experiment that was done years ago. And I, the only reason I'm relaying is because I thought it was fascinating. But they did a surgery on a fellow where they opened up his skull. And they um, they um, stimulated a part of his brain, and the person lift up his lift up lifted up his arm, and they asked the person what happened there, and he said, "You made me move my arm." What they were hoping that he would say is, "I moved my arm," because it was the same stimulation to his brain as if he had done it himself, but he didn't say that. He said, "You moved my arm," and I think that uh, that actually shows that there is a, a mind. I, I mean, I don't use these anecdotal evidence to prove that we have a mind. You know, I was saying that's that would be clear in scripture, but I think that was a really cool experiment to show that what was going on was different than just uh, electrical chemical process of the brain. I see. So you make a difference between mind and brain. Mind is outside the brain. Do I understand it right? Yeah. Well, I I I could not give you a location, but I don't think that our mind is our brain. Um, and would you say that the mind, like the signal going to the brain, needs to be interpreted by the brain? So it comes really down, as a, for my view, it comes then re also really down to the brain because the brain receives the signal. So isn't then the core the brain? Well, I would say definitely our brain is involved with that. But, you know, the difference would be is that I would say that God uses our sense and reasoning in order to make us know things for certain but the the problem with not having god in the equation is that um everything become then you have to be a determinist and then um having a discussion over the truth about brain states or anything is, is totally meaningless because i you would have to say that i'm not saying this because i've reasoned to a conclusion but because of the um uh, electrical chemical process of my brain i must say this and that's why you know i'm saying that all people who deny god must be strict determinists Hmm. Okay. I, I tried to follow that. This was a bit much, but um, sorry if I misrepresent anything you say. Um, just interrupt me. It's no problem. Uh, when when you say something, when you say God or any concept, for me that is like 
a concept in your brain or you interpret the signal which can be god or something else that comes to your brain and your brain works with this signal right so for me the the I, I maybe repeat myself sorry about that but for me the core is still the brain because everything you interpret what is outside of your brain or comes into your brain like the signal like the mind that comes to the brain to the brain for um, processing for example um so the core is still for me the brain but maybe i can't follow what you said well I don't know he, how... here's my question that may help is what you just said true or did you have to say it because of your brain chemistry can you repeat that sorry is the statement that you made is it true or is it something that you had to say because of your brain chemistry for me everything comes comes down to my brain so I, I would say it's because of my brain but i am i would say i'm really confident in the deterministic uh um view i would say i'm a determinist so uh, yes, right, I but, think. But, but then I truth or falsehood that. are meaningless. And and like Doug Wilson came up with the experiment. If you took a bottle of Mountain Dew and a bottle of Dr. Pepper and you shook them and you open them and they start to fizz and you'd say, which of those fizzes is true? And you say that would be an absurdity because it would be just fizz. And if your worldview is true, then you're not uh, then you're just simply fizzing atheistically and I'm fizzing theistically into having a discussion over, you know, what I would call brain barf is actually meaningless. But I think that you and I both attribute meaning to this because we both really do know that God exists. Well, oh, I don't know, maybe we go on a, on a different road, but um, I would say uh, that's maybe a contradictory um, on my part, but I would say that uh, I, I don't think meaning is a, is a real thing outside of my brain. But that com comes down to brain, you know, because I think meaning is a concept in my brain. Um, wouldn't, would you agree or wouldn't you agree? Well, I, the thing is, if you're saying that there's no meaning and then you try and give meaning to there being no meaning, I mean, that's what that's oh, what I say. Yeah. When I go and speak at a, at a campus, I say, I'm giving you an option here today, Jesus Christ or absurdity. But a lot of people choose absurdity because they love their sin. If, and if, you know sorry um maybe maybe you misunderstood if i say there is no meaning i mean no meaning outside of my brain outside of you know um let's say i die i don't think there's meaning around um it's just because i'm alive because my brain brain works and because i have concepts in my brain um meaning is as a is a concept in my brain but it's not real in the sense of outside of my brain maybe that helps to clarify that well the so, question would be is that a meaningful statement or did you have to say it is that a meaningful statement or do you have to say it? right is what you said meaningful or is it but just your brain fizzing those words that your brain chemistry forced you to say because you're determinist. I'm saying they both cannot be the case. If something is just, you know, all you're doing, I would say, you know, uh, pardon the colloquial language or, you know, the, the raw language, but all you're doing is your brain barfing into your microphone so that I can hear you. But when you attribute meaning to it, you're attributing something other than the chemical reaction because I would say there's no chemical reaction to shaking up a bottle of Mountain Dew and opening it and watching it fit. Ah, I see. Yeah, for me, meaning is also a chemical reaction the concept of meaning is also a chemical reaction yeah i i don't believe that that would be a proper definition of meaning that would be you know a weed growing one way or a weed growing another way that you wouldn't be able to say that one is growing the right way and one is growing the right way you wouldn't give one meaning and another not meaning that it's it's just the way things happen and i'm saying that nobody lives like that so you wouldn't say that um meaning is a concept in my brain I, w I would say that if you're a determinist, that there is no such thing as meaning, that you're forced to say what you're saying, that you're not saying that this is meaningful to anything other than, you know, the, my brain states, what my brain is making me say. I'm saying to have to for something to be meaningful, then it's not just simply a chemical reaction of your brain. I'm not I'm, I don't see how you can get meaning from a chemical reaction. Not get it, but it um, for me, I don't get meaning from a chemical reaction. For me, I define meaning, maybe we define it differently. I think uh, this may be the problem. Um, for me, meaning is a chemical reaction, which 
um, happens in my brain and which, for example, I think if no one ever would, if I, if I hadn't heard about the word meaning or the concept of meaning in the society I grow up, maybe I wouldn't even um, have the concept of meaning uh, today because I think I learned it along the way. When, I know that's my, well, just well, my definition of meaning. Well, that's fine. Just tell me one thing that is meaningful then. Um, I have a lot of things that are meaningful, but they are incorporated in um, the deterministic worldview. For me, um, determinism can um, go with meaning because meaning is, as I said, a chemical reaction and chemical reactions are part of the deterministic worldview. So for me, a lot of stuff is meaningful. For example, talk with you. I think um, it has meaning to me to talk to you and to find out what is your position and explain my position and stuff like that. For example, there's many stuff uh, I contribute meaning to. I wouldn't right. do that, I think, without but, uh, some My problem. understanding of determinism is that you had to say that based on the chemical reactions of your brain. And I'm just, I just don't understand how you get meaning from something that you have to say that cannot have a truth or false uh, aspect to it. That you're, yeah, you I understand. It's um, uh, because of my brain and the chemical state of my brain, therefore um, meaning evolves because my brain gets stimulated in a, in a way in the past, um, the concept of meaning uh, evolved and and is present now because of these influences from the past. So I would say, I would explain meaning, the concept of meaning, which is in my brain for my uh, understanding, um, in a deterministic worldview. So uh, I don't I don't see that um, if everything is deterministic, I don't think uh, meaning is 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 not um, real or not here because. Uh, because everything works deterministic, therefore is meaning, um, and therefore uh, has meaning evolved in, in some way, you know, um, because of chemical reactions. But I think the problem is that we define meaning differently. But well, I, I think you're making a truth claim about meaning. And I'm saying if you're determinist, if you're a determinist, that what you're saying is not necessarily true. It's your brain chemistry forcing you to say that. And I see, I mean, there are, uh, I agree, I agree. There are professed Christians who claim to be determinists as well. And they try to reason with me. I say, of course, they'd be de determined to do it, but it just does not make sense according to a deterministic worldview as, as far as I can see. But I don't know if the last fellow who was uh, willing to, or wanted to speak with me is available yet. Was that me? But it was nice speaking with you anyways. And um, yeah, 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 maybe cool. we'll get an opportunity. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. so I'll, I'll pop in. So yeah, I'm not sure if we're going to get JF or not. We're just going to have to see if he shows up in the time that you are still here, Sai. But I know that Jack uh, Angstrike wants to have one or two questions for you, if that's all right. All right. If he'll be the last one, then if the uh, other fellow doesn't, doesn't, doesn't show up show in that, in that sure. time frame, then, uh, then I'll just take off. But yeah, go ahead. Sounds go ahead. good. Yeah, well, I was listening to what you were saying, and I, I couldn't understand why somehow um, meaning would be antithetical to determinism. So I was wondering if you could explain that. Well, sure. Um, I would say that um, if you're a determinist, then you cannot differentiate between truth or falsehood or just being forced to say what you're saying. I'm saying as a determinist, what you're saying is not necessarily true. It's just your brain off-gassing. I, I don't understand why would you not be able to determine between truth or falsehood if it was determined? Well, if you shook up a can of Mountain Dew and you opened it, would you be able to determine if that was true or false fizz? But determinism doesn't entail that things are that everything is fizz, right? Well, your your thoughts would be on a very crude basic level your thoughts would be brain fizz well, why i don't see the entailment well if you're determinist is what are your thoughts then no no you're the one who's making the claim right so i'm asking right. you and to I'm, demonstrate i'm claiming i'm asking you to demonstrate the entailment i'm claiming that if you're a determinist that your brain is an evolved meat machine and your thoughts are the byproduct of the electrical chemical firing of your synapses within your brain. And if you want to claim that it's something else, I'm all ears. Look, 
determinism is just the thesis that all events are fully caused by antecedent conditions, right? So for you to say that that entails that um, your thoughts are just brain fizz requires an argument, right? I don't see anything in the definition of determinism, right? Which I'll repeat is just the thesis that all events are fully caused by antecedent conditions. But I don't see anything in that definition whereby it inevitably follows that your thoughts are brain fits. So if you're going to make the claim, and if the claim is uh, putatively a justified claim, presumably you have some kind of argument to support the claim. Do you or don't you? Well, I will state once again that according to a, a non-Christian or according to an evol evolutionary worldview, your brain is on a very basic level an evolved meat computer. And I understand that our thoughts, according to an evolutionary um, worldview, are simply the result of the firing of the synapses and an electrical chemical process within your brain. And if you, and that's my understanding of it. If you want to say, no, that's not the case, that's fine, but that's my understanding of it. And that being the case, on a very rudimentary level, an equivalent is shaking a bottle of Mountain Dew and opening it and watching it fizz. And if it's any different than that, I'm all ears. I'm willing to look, hear your explanation look, on how it's different. Look, I don't have to explain anything. First of all, all right. Well, thank sorry, you all for your sorry, time, guys. Sorry. I had a great day, sorry. and uh, we'll talk to you later. Sorry, bye bye. I wasn't. All right, done. Darcio. I wasn't done, right? I didn't say anything about an evolutionary worldview, right? I simply said that determinism is. Okay, the wait. Sorry, there. sorry. Just one sec, Jack. Okay, so sorry. The way we try to do it in here is: Did Sal already dip? No, he's still here. So we'll give we'll give people closing statements. Um, so we'll. I don't care about the order. You can you can finish what you're saying and make it into a closing, and then we'll get.